Hi, I'm Patu from Free Fin Cal. Today, let's talk about how to classify mutual funds. One of the first uh, things that uh, uh, a new investor tends to think is that it's actually possible to classify mutual funds in terms of their returns, in terms like low return mutual funds, uh, medium return mutual funds and high return mutual funds. That's an incorrect thing to do and we're going to see why that is the case. The problem with using returns to um, classify mutual funds is for uh, it's uh, so uncertain. For example, if you look at uh, Nifty 50 uh, and if you take a look at its uh, two year returns, it could be anywhere like uh, minus 15% uh, or plus 20%, anywhere in between that. And there's a huge spread. Now, um, if you were to look at long term returns, 20 year returns, in the Indian market, the data is very less. But if you were to look at the US market, the for example, the S&P 500, I have shown several times before that uh, because the data is so, uh, uh, the history is so long, even the 20 year return has been uh, having a more or less the same spread as the two year return. So it's, uh, so what will happen is that if you were to use returns to classify mutual funds, one time when you look at it, the mutual, the equity mutual fund return would be much lower than a fixed deposit return it will be like a savings bank account return sometimes it will be much higher so uh, so it then what will happen is if you have three categories let's say uh, then the equity mutual fund will skip uh, will, i mean will hop between one category and the other well, in january it may be in the first category in uh, december it may be in the third category let's say the first category is low return the third category is high return so it will just keep fluctuating or hopping uh, among the uh, return categories and you don't want that you want a more stabler classification system and that is the reason why uh, you should not uh, categorize asset classes or mutual funds based on returns you always categorize them using risk and uh, one simple way to use uh, 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 risk as a classification is using the volatility that is the fluctuation in the day-to-day -day NAV this is found by calculating the daily returns so you take the daily returns and you calculate the average of the daily returns over a given period, let's say two years or five years or whatever. Once you find out the average of the daily return, you then find out uh, how much each individual daily return has deviated from this average. And that's called the standard deviation. I have talked about this in multiple videos before. So you can have a look at that. Uh, so we are going to use standard deviation as, uh, as a measure of uh, volatility and we are going to use it for categorizing mutual funds. Now uh, the problem is that this is not the only kind of uh, risk that mutual funds face. This is a visible risk that you see in the uh, NAV moving up and down. There are many invisible risks. For example, you have credit risk, you have mass redemption risk like we had in the Franklin case. Uh, the Franklin situation is not because just because of poor uh, credit it is because of mass redemption. People make the mistake of assuming that it is because of the poor uh, bond quality. No, it is people losing faith in the portfolio and that's the reason. And so it, uh, so there is a credit risk, there is a mass redemption risk. Then there is a, something called as reinvestment risk. The reinvestment risk means that today you may be getting good returns from liquid funds. Tomorrow when you uh, put your money again, uh, because the newer bonds have lower coupon rate, then the returns may come down or the returns may go up. So the returns in uh, liquid funds can fluctuate like that and that's called reinvestment risk. These kind of risks are hidden risks which are not manifest in the NAV from, on a day to day basis. So when that happens, uh, you cannot use volatility to categorize them because you know that uh, um, suddenly when there is a credit risk, the NAV will drop. That is the reason why star ratings have all get into trouble because they do not use hidden risks to put the star rating. They use only the volatility and the returns to, uh, uh, to implement the star rating. So volatility can be used, but it is not a perfect measure. So you can see here that I have taken the two year category median return of several categories here and I have uh, listed them in terms of increasing category returns and this is done for the uh, for seven years. So these are seven year trailing seven years category uh, returns the median median means it is the uh, half of the the middle point of the return distribution and uh, that's a much better measure to use than the average. 
uh, you can see here uh, you can see credit risk having the lowest return over then come overnight funds then value fund contra funds dividend yield funds small cap liquid arbitrage you can see in both cases there is a complete mixture of uh, debt funds hybrid funds um, and equity oriented funds it's a complete confusion and it and you can see the sorry um, and you can see that the from between 7 years to 10 uh, uh, 2 years the uh, the positions change quite a bit there is a lot of hopping among the categories this is not uh, acceptable for classifying mutual funds instead of that if you were to use the 2 year median standard deviation to categorize the funds and if you were to use the 7 year uh, standard deviation the category median uh, and list them in terms of increasing standard deviation that is increasing volatility you can see here you have overnight liquid arbitrage ultra short money market floating rate low duration short duration you can see uh, clearly you, you have a nice uh, 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 categorization in terms of uh, debt funds and in terms as the debt fund bond uh, uh, tenure becomes uh, more and more uh, uh, the volatility becomes more and more and uh, then from there you have the hybrids and from the hybrids you have the um, large cap multi cap focused ELSS value contra large and mid cap mid cap small cap small cap being the most volatile the same pattern is repeated over seven years remember if, when you consider seven year returns overnight mutual funds did not exist uh, seven years ago um, uh, short uh, duration funds, low duration funds, they did not exist. Money market did not exist. In spite of so many categories not existing, you can see the general trend. L the lowest liquid fund is low risk, then come arbitrage, then come ultra short, then come floating rate. So the, the pattern, uh, the mid cap, small cap focus, they're all on the higher end. So the pattern is more or less uh, repeated when you use standard deviation. That is the reason why people use standard deviations to classify uh, mutual funds or not returns the same is true of asset classes as well catch you later bye bye